the greatest enemy of you achieving your dreams for your life is the praise of other people. Hey, it's Lucas Grobot, and you're listening to Weaver and Loom. Welcome to Weaver and Loom. We are on a series about what it means to be a change maker. What does it mean to be great? What does it mean to be an absolute nobody? And how do we actually change our mindset and order our life so that we achieve the vision that we have set out to achieve? How do we reach our goals? How do we actually live great lives. And so today we are going to continue the series talking about one out of the two enemies that keep us from achieving greatness, that keep us from being change makers, and that keep us from becoming absolute nobodies. Yesterday we talked about what it means to be an absolute nobody and how as we grow closer to achieving the vision that we have for our life, it actually means that we grow as we grow, go up and up and up to reach that vision, it actually means we go lower and lower and lower in learning how to serve other people in greater and greater measures, oftentimes with less and less recognition, with less and less accolades and praise. Because we're no longer doing it for the, the praise of man, the, the, the pats on the back, the limelight, the PR shot, but we're actually trying to serve and help other people. And that is the path to building any business. That is the path to achieving any goal that we have in our life is figuring out how can we serve others? How can we build a product or a service that changes other people's lives and enables them to achieve their goals? So what is enemy number one to achieving greatness in our lives? Well, it is, as I said, having our lives centered around the praise and the affirmation of other people or pandering for likes. When we are searching and our our self-esteem is wrapped up in what other people think about us, what other people say about us, how many likes that we get on whatever social media platform it is, how many listens that we get, how many how many people praise us and say, wow, you're so cool. How much attention are we getting? How much limelight are we getting? If we are searching for the praise and the affirmation of our peers, of people around us, we will be caught in the middle. What does that mean? It means that we are caught in the the mainstream masses where everyone's going because people are going to praise and make you feel good and affirm you when you're going along with the crowd, when you're just going with the flow. But if you are going to the fringes, if you're going to the edges, if you are trying to do work and doing work that's making a difference, that's making a statement, that's making a change, you are going to face resistance. And and the more resistance that you face, the, the, the more that people around you are going to say, is it really worth it? Is your art really worth it? Maybe you could tone it down a bit. Maybe you could have a little less passion around that. Maybe you could you know, live a little bit more balanced life, have a little bit more fun, have a little less fun. There will be critics that will come out of the woodworks the moment that you begin to actually set out to achieve your vision, your dream, your goals, your greatness. So when we are proxying our lives, when our lives are centered around what other people say, and that is a sign that we are heading towards meteorocracy. So it's like I described in the previous episode with Franny and Zoe. Franny was wrapped up in what other people thought of her. And so her whole life was predicated on what are they going to think? What are they going to say? Are they going to think that I'm cool? What is my mom going to say? What is my dad going to say? What are my friends going to say? 
What is my brother, sister, spouse, kids going to say? This is something that I believe in, something that I want to see happen in the world, but mm, so-and-so wouldn't like it. That is a sign that we are diminishing, that we are scaling back the vision for our life, scaling back the purpose for our life, and we are going to fail to achieve what we were born to achieve. So now as artists and entrepreneurs, this is what we were born to do. We were born as change makers. We were born to achieve greatness. How do we do that? Well, as an artist, we are called and meant to speak truth. We are meant to listen and connect the dots. We are meant to turn things upside down and on its head so that we can find greater clarity in the world, to represent culture in the world in a way that it's meaningful and causes an emotional response in people or an action to take place. This is the work that we're called to. But oftentimes that work happens on the fringes, that connecting the dots, it's happening on the fringes. And many times people won't like it. And if we're creating art that only the mainstream and the masses that everyone likes, it means that we're probably not in the vein that we're supposed to. We're probably not creating, especially on the onset, creating and saying the things that are really in our hearts to say. The second thing, as entrepreneurs, we are called to create systems and products and services that connect people and help people connect to their dreams, to their purpose, to their vision. And that requires us to listen. That requires us to iterate. That requires us to serve. That means that we're not showboating our product. We're not showboating our service, but we're going to Our smallest audience, the minimal viable audience, what is the smallest audience that we can serve in a meaningful way to cause them to reach their goals and success dependent on our service product to them? So if we are all of a sudden pandering to the masses and trying to just get the praise and the affirmation of the most amount of people and our lives are centered around that, then we're not going to make it very far in the process of building a company, in building a a service, a new innovative way of doing life. We're not going to make it far because we're pandering our lives based off of praise. But what we do need to do is find that critical and creative and constructive feedback that we can iterate on. To understand, okay, what is actually helpful? What is actually serving my market? What is actually meaningful to my readers? What's meaningful to my listeners? What's meaningful to those who are looking at this piece of art? What's meaningful to those people who are buying my shoes or my shirt? And then how can I adapt it? How can I iterate it so that I can reach my goals and my visions by enabling them to reach theirs. So that is all for today. Pandering to the public, it is going to keep us from our best work. When we're so caught up and worried about what the masses think, not the small audience that you're seeking to serve, but the masses, when we're caught up in that, it is going to sidetrack us from our vision. Stay tuned for tomorrow where we talk about how we are supposed to work in the shadows, not hide in the shadows, and how the other enemy of achieving change, of being a change maker, achieving greatness, is hiding in the shadows. And we're going to break that down tomorrow right here on Weaver and Loom Own the Future. Thank you for being with me today, please share this with someone, an artist or a creative who is looking to make a difference in their life and in the world. That would mean so much to me. Also, my book, Anchor the Discipline to Stop Drifting, is on Amazon. I promise you it will not disappoint. If you you love this podcast and you're seeking to make a difference, start with the book, Anchor the Discipline to Stop Drifting. Super short, 
super practical and very helpful for you to engage, activate, and achieve your goals and dreams starting today. That's all. Remember, I'm Lucas Scrobot. You are a change maker, and this is where destiny is woven.